The distribution of water in Ghana's capital city, Accra, is ineffective. Every day, the townswomen are obliged to walk long distances to those taps that are in working order to buy water by the bucket. They pay more than they would have to if they were properly connected to the municipal water system. But they have no choice. They must have water. It's important because without water we can't live. We drink it, we, we bath with it, wash our things. If they lock water for a, a, a month, we are very, very scared because we have to go far away, bring water coming. If not, we can't cook ourselves without water. So water is most important to us. This is such a common sight that nobody reacts anymore. But it doesn't have to be like this. The pipe system is there, though it's both inadequate and in disrepair. A political decision has been made to partly privatise the water distribution in Accra. Management of the system is to be taken over by foreign companies. There must be fundamental restructuring of the uh, company, Ghana Water Company, to meet the challenges, you know, that are on the ground. And to be able to do that will be a first step into under, really looking into the reasons for, you know, the severe shortcomings that we have with the, you know, water delivery in Accra and other urban centers. But as long as, you know, that old structure still exists, it's just a change of name with people with the same attitudes still within the sector. I don't think that any restructuring will meet the objectives. There is plenty of water in Ghana. They're blessed with a huge lake, the Volta Lake, and the, it's not a matter of resources. It's a matter of, of uh, arranging the facilities and the institutions to, to make it work, to deliver the water, and to make the water supply meet the water demand. The waterworks have sufficient production capacity but money is a central problem. Of course, the uh, financial aspect is a very important issue, but then we, we have the mandate to also collect the revenue, but because water is, is um, everybody needs to drink water, it's a bit political, and so it's difficult to charge economic rates because once uh, people start uh, complaining about the cost of water, the government would say, hey, why don't you reduce the tariff because it's important to them. Mm. It's interpreted that way, that if during your, your tenure of office, that is a government, water prices are increased, then it's, it's uh, concluded that you didn't do well because you are making people pay higher uh, costs for, for, for water. Mm. So the government is always uh, putting a barrier in our way. The lack of water affects all citizens regardless of income level. We haven't had water flowing in the taps for some time now, for about a week now. The taps, the, the water is not flowing, so the taps are all dry. If the taps does flow at night, the pressure is not high, so um, it, it's able to enter this one. Um, fortunately for us, in a week the taps have not flown, but yesterday, last night, the taps were flowing, but the pressure wasn't high, but I was able to enter this one. So fortunately for us, we have water mm. in this tank. Mm. But because it is not connected to the pipes in the house, whenever we need water, we have to come and fetch in a bucket like this. Mm. When it's full, we take it inside and use it. Mm. The limited pipe-borne water distribution infrastructure has created new business opportunities. Water has become a commodity. Anyone who is able to invest in a packaging machine such as this rapidly becomes an intermediary for water distribution. Nowadays, all over Accra, one sees sachet water being sold between the queues of stationary vehicles among sweaty motorists who are willing to pay for some refreshment. Hello. How much is your water? How much? 200. 200. Okay, thank you. For Kande and her sisters in the low-income urban district of Nima, 
Access to safe water is perhaps the biggest daily worry. If it were possible for households to have their own fully functioning connection to the municipal water system, it would mean lower costs and less drudgery. And there's no time to lose. The pipelines are becoming more and more dilapidated, with holes that have been made to access free water. Accra is the engineer's nightmare. It's, it's a city that has not been planned, was never planned. It, it grows when the population suddenly come with a demand. And it has become a very expensive city to run. So you sort of separate water and sanitation, water and wastewater, whereas um, it's important to keep it together because the more water you bring to a place, the more wastewater you'll have. It's crucial to have a holistic view of the water system, sanitation and the environment. The sewage disposal system in Accra is already an environmental burden and may become worse. For one thing, there's a lack of toilets. You can see a full compound like this. There's no any toilets, please. You have to walk down there, public to go. And sometimes when it's full and they didn't come and, and collect it, you have to go to other area to before you get a public toilet to use. So it's, it's, that one too is a problem. <laughs> You could have about 60% of the population of low-income areas in Accra and also in Kumasi, basically all large cities in Ghana, dependent on public toilets. The existing wastewater treatment plants and infrastructure need vast improvements and expansion. When Accra was the size of a manageable city, it had all these facilities in place. There were, in the various uh, areas, uh, treatment plants which were then serving the various locations. They still are there, although because they have not been maintained over the years, they may not be as efficient as they were when they were created. The municipal authorities collect and treat only a minor part of all wastewater produced in the city, and to a large extent, sewage is disposed of untreated in the sea. Accra is facing a great challenge in terms of water, sanitation and environmental protection. But one must not forget that in that challenge is also an opportunity the creation of a long-term, sustainable urban water system.